Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nikita, and here with me today for this presentation are my teammates, David, Abraham, Guadalupe, and Daniel. So for the past year, we've been working with the LA County Regional Planning Department on our project, Plan Analysis Application. Our county liaisons are Mitch Glazer, Mark, and Tony, and our faculty advisors, Dr. Zhu. So first, I'd like to start off with some background information about the department that we're working for. The Regional Planning Department is one of the smaller departments in the County of Los Angeles. And it is also an important entity in supporting the Board of Supervisors with land use planning and zoning enforcement for the unincorporated areas. These areas are part of LA County, which covers about 4,000 square miles and contains five soup districts, each one led by its own supervisor. Now I'd like to move on to a brief overview of our project. So our project has three main components, the first one being case review. This is where users view a list of all the case records and have access to look into the case history to get more insight into the status of the case, who it is assigned to, and much more. This also helps relieve the department's stress of traveling through multiple external sources in order to counsel the customers. Which brings me to our second component, customer counseling. So this is where customers interact with the front desk to learn more about the codes and regulations that are applied to X amount of permits that case may entail. And lastly, we have document creation. This is where, this is where generated permit documents are pre-populated with information from the database, therefore completely eliminating the tedious process of manually filling out the forms. And it also gives users the capability of editing information pertaining to their individualized cases. So to complete these tasks, we wanted to look at a big objective, which was creating a web application that would be able to do those kind of things. So ideally, our web application would help search for plans, it will fill out the permits, and it will also return relevant permit documents relating to the plans. The other objective that we had looked at to accomplish throughout the project was to experiment with different packages, frameworks, and APIs. This was so that not only are we giving a project to LA County, but we are also enhancing ourselves as students by learning these different packages, frameworks, and languages so that we also have another step through the door when we get out of college. The other objective that we had looked for was to collaborate with different departments. So it wasn't just regional planning that we were solely focused on, but we also had other departments like the IT department, so that overall within our project, we will be able to have access for permissions for the permits, database access, and server use. So if we needed to deploy our project within LA County, we would be able to do so. And here's most of the technologies that we used. So on the top left, you'll see React and Node.js with Express. So a lot of our project is based on JavaScript. You'll see Microsoft SQL Server, so that's holding the database, so we're able to store the data that we're given from LA County. And then you'll see on the bottom we have Google Drive and Google Docs. So that's something a lot of people are usually familiar with, and it really helps us out with our overall project. So getting a little more into it, we'll first talk about React, which is a popular JavaScript library, and it's pretty well known because of its association with Facebook. So a couple of things that React has is its popular and fancy styling that makes it look modern. So you have things like the buttons, the overall look going back, going forward, the text or the font that looks a lot more fancier than just regular HTML. And so you'll see that we used React for our overall project as the main bulk of it. Next is Node.js, which is a JavaScript runtime environment. And this is to really help us keep track of the different packages and dependencies that we have. So a lot of the packages are open sourced that we can find online. And we utilize those to be able to help make our project a lot easier to work with and display. And so Node.js helps keep track of the versions as well as which packages they are, so that if we ever deployed our project on a different machine, we're able to download those packages easily so that our project works as well as it does from our machine to another machine. The next part is Express, which is a framework for Node so that it opens other ports and servers so that we're able to deploy stuff onto like the server. So we're able to deploy our web application so that's up and running. 
Next up is Material UI. So this is another styling library for React. So as I mentioned with React, it helps styles the buttons, the fonts, and that kind of stuff. Material UI offers another different way of being able to format those things. And it just gives us a lot more different options to provide a variety of different UI components that we would like. And then we basically used Material UI to uphold our project for more appealing graphics. And then we have Microsoft SQL Server. So this is basically our database. Here is where we store all the data that we're given from LA County so that we're able to access this data whenever we need to kind of Did David's internet cut out? Did. Um, am I here? Yeah, you're here. Oh, yeah, you're okay. here. Yes, sorry. Um, yeah, so there's a couple of challenges with our project where we had trouble with some of the APIs, frameworks, and packages. So something that happened is that some of our packages weren't utilized as much in that we couldn't used everything that we wanted. So some packages, we only use like one or two functions. And that really just took up a lot of space within our project. And then many of the packages were really similar to each other. So on the screen, you'll see we had PDF kit, React PDF, and PDF make. All of them practically did the same thing, which was basically displaying a PDF. So none of them really had some of the functionalities that we were looking for. like annotating the PDF or being able to easily do the autofill. It was all just simply displaying the PDF on our project. And then we also had some trouble with some of the APIs that we used. Like initially we had Microsoft Word and that was a little troubling in itself where we deployed our web application and then we had to go to the plan and then that plan opened up Microsoft Word. And then for Microsoft Word, we had to do another little bit of tinkering, put it in the plan ID and then it would autofill the document. So there was a lot of little steps that had to be done in order to actually get what we wanted done. So we kind of moved away from that as well as sometimes Microsoft, when we put in the plan ID, it didn't work as we wanted. PDF kit also was pretty troubling in that we had to specify the exact coordinates of where we wanted things to be autofilled. So if we wanted uh, autofill selection, in like two different places, we had to go into the document, find out ex where those coordinates are, and then uh, kind of code them in. And then another thing that PDF Kit had along with PDF Make was that we had to style the documents in JSON format. So we were given the original documents from LA County, but we had to style it over into JSON before our application could be able to actually read it and then display it so that it looks just like the original documents that we were given. And then we also have the Google API. So a lot of people are familiar with Google suite of applications like Google Docs, Slides, Sheets, and Forms. So it's pretty easy for a lot of people to get used to this. But what we had focused on was Google Docs and Google App Scripts. Google Docs really helped us because instead of installing the different packages that we needed, Google Docs already displays the PDFs. So it's a lot easier to be able to do that, as well as if you wanted to edit the document, you can just open the document and edit it then and there. And then we also used Google App Scripts so that it can connect with our application to be able to get those documents and to be able to help autofill, given a little bit of data from the user if they wanted to autofill more, doc more documents and more parts. And our structure of the application, so on our front end, we have React, basically helping display the UI components, helping display a much easier to read page for any user who comes across it. And then we have Express and Node.js, which help get the calls from React to be able to call data from the server, which is again, the Microsoft SQL server as our database, and then return the data to React so that 
it's not just a bunch of random data everywhere. It's again, styled and nice and neat so that people are easier to read it. So now I'll be going over the features of the application. Um, currently, we display all the plans using their RPPL numbers that are within the database. So these RPPL numbers are actually unique numbers to each plan. So using these actually makes it easier for us to quickly and efficiently display all the plans to the user and not worry about them having to get a case with the same number. So once you have all your cases shown as a list on the browser, you're able to click the plan. And once you select your plan that you're looking for, it will display the information. And with that information, you're able to see a detailed description on the plan and it will involve who approved the plan, what plan, when the plan was approved and details on the square footage and things of that nature. So using this plan information, the user is able to generate multiple documents with that filled data from the application as well. So from here, the user can pull things like the square footage, things like the plan number, who approved, the date it's approved, and pull that off of our application onto a document. From there, the autofill is created to pull that information and autofill it into each different document template that we have created. And from there, the user can download it for offline use. So as you heard prior, we use Google's API to store those documents. However, if in customer counseling, the user needs to quickly get the data and show it offline to a user, they can use a docx type file and bring up that document and they're able to pull it out and print it or even just display it to the user offline quickly and efficiently. So this allows the customer counseling part of the application to be quickly usable and user friendly. So here, this is the plan finder. This is our detailed search of the application. So the user can search using a prefix and then they can search using a plan type. So as you can see here, the prefix is RPP underscore 2019. There's multiple plans with that prefix. So you would go deeper into it using the plan type and the word class. This will quickly and efficiently cut down what uh, plans you are not looking for and just give you the specific ones. So then the user can click on this and it's a quick and efficient way to search for your plan and not have to worry about having to scroll through every single plan and you're able to find the plan quickly. So originally the plan finder, we had a couple troubles at the very beginning of uh, creating it. So the first couple prototypes we created were actually very slow. We would search the entire database of RPPL numbers using the string that the user would implement. And this first one only used the RPPL number. So it was searching throughout the entire database with the same prefixes and any RPPL number contained within that string. So it made the process really slow and the application would have to wait maybe two to three minutes before it would actually display any information. Due to this, it was deemed unusable for the project because no user wants to wait two to three minutes after a query and wait for their um, wait for their uh, plan to show up in front of the screen. So then we used the drop down menus and those were also slow at first because of the same reason. But this one was actually a lot faster than the original prototype. So it cut down to around a minute and a minute and a half after typing, the user would then see their returned result already on the screen. So we ran through multiple challenges with the plan finder, even though it was a key component that we needed. So the plan finder was the first milestone that we had in our project because being able to efficiently find your plan will allow the customer counseling and even allow getting the information on the plan to be very automated and quickly as possible to be done. So now we have the plan viewer. Like I said prior, the plan viewer allows you to see multiple details on your plan. So this is another key component because you need to see all this information before you can take out any of the information to put onto external documents. So the user sees all the relevant information of the plan. As you see here, it has the description showing that the tenant wants to convert the unit into three stories and it shows the square footage. So after that, it automates the permit processing because once you click on the use, you're able to see 
all the permits that are needed. So as you can see that below, factual and staff analysis and things of that nature, these permits right here can be shown in PDF and the user can get the list to generate for the plan. So the plan finder and the plan viewer were two big milestones because these were essentially the skeleton of the application. You need to be able to find your plan and be able to view its details in full so that we are able to autofill documents based on these procedures and allow the customer counseling to be done very efficiently. So now we're going to go over how we made it possible to generate the documents onto the web application. When the user selects from the displayed selection menu a document they would like to review, a PDF version of the document is generated below the displayed data on the plan viewer page. If the user needs to edit the document, the user is provided with the options to either export the document in various formats, print out a physical copy of the document, or to link and open the document in Google Drive. Using the Google Drive API is what allowed us to generate the forms the user desires to preview or edit. All of the templates are stored in one secure place from which the Google Drive API creates a copy of the template to not tamper with the original document. To be able to populate the templates with more recent data, the Google Drive API detects the tags inside the document and replaces them with actual data values. The Google Drive API is also what gives the users the flexibility to export the form as a Microsoft Word document and or a PDF. Being able to add the document preview onto the plan analysis application was another major milestone through the development journey. The department can now use this feature to have a much more facilitated and modern system of permit processing and an overall increase in productivity by quickly searching for a plan, generating a preview of the selected document, and having the ability to download the form with varied extensions. When using Google Drive to display and edit the document, the data fields are detected and highlighted immediately to catch the user's attention. The panel on the side narrows down the number of fields for users to focus on only the non-populated fields as seen on the images on this slide. With just the click of a button, changes are immediately reflected onto the document being edited. Having completed the document editor was the team's fourth biggest milestone by providing the department with a much more simplified document navigation system. This customized side panel meets the user's needs by allowing them to have an easy editing experience. So now I'm going to narrate over this video showcasing our application. Uh, when, the, when you first enter the application, you see the home page. And then from here, you can click search plans to search for a plan. And from here, you can search for a plan by plan number, plan type, and work class. So as an example, I can enter R RPPL 2019 as the plan number, permits and reviews as the plan type, and CUP as the work class. And you can navigate through pages of search results using the numbers or the arrows. And then if you wanna see information on a plan, you can click the plan number. And then that takes you to here where you can see some data on, on the plan like district, project, and plan status. And from here, you can also generate all the documents for your plan.
And the backend uses the plan type, word class, and use to determine what documents can be generated. So in this case, if you select commercial alcoholic beverage sales offsite for use, you can see the list of selections you can make to generate documents. And when you make a selection, you can see a list of panels for each document. And you could click on the panel to see the document. Um, in some cases, selections include more than one document. So for example, in this specific case, findings, you have the general document and then other documents that are specific to the plan type, work class and use. And of course, our application is mobile friendly. So you could make the screen really small and still see all the data. You can still um, select the use and then make a selection, click on the panels and see the documents. And then we're back at factual. And then you can click the factual panel And then here, uh, you can open as a Google document or download as a Microsoft Word or PDF document. And of course, you can see the preview of the document as a PDF in the web application. And then you can see that some fields were filled while others were not. And in these cases, to fill these missing fields easily, you can open as a Google Doc. And then from here, you can go to add-ons, fill missing values, start. And then you'll be shown a sidebar where you can click show fields. And then this will highlight everything that needs to be entered manually in the document. And then in the sidebar, you get a form where you can enter those documents. So, you can just, right here, we're just entering some dummy values. And then when you're ready, you can click fill document. And then those values are inserted into the document. And then if you want to get rid of the highlighting, you could just go to edit, undo, edit, undo once more. And then you can click fill document and they're populated again. So the workflow consists of storing the templates of the documents in a shared Google Drive folder. And basically when the user um, requests a document, a, the application creates a copy of the template and gives it to the user. And here's an example of a template and the data used to populate the document. And this is just a JSON object. So the templates have three different types of tags. The first one with the double curly braces is used by, by the web application to replace the, the key um, with the corresponding value, which is found by looking at the JSON object. And then the last two fields are used by the add-on to create form fields. So the first one tells us tells the add-on to create a text field. And then the second one tells the add-on to create a, a dropdown with um, the options that are, that, that are found between the parentheses. And ideally, the copies are stored in a separate Google Drive folder. So now I'll talk about uh, one of the coolest aspects of our project, and it's our code that works with uh, Google APIs. So first I'll talk about the code that generates the documents and then the code for the add-on. So first, in order to use the Google APIs, you need to get the client library. So we do that by running the command npm install Google APIs. And npm is just our package manager that lets us manage packages, their dependencies and versions. And in order to start using the libraries, we need to authenticate. So you see how we're providing an authentication 
object. And then we also specify the version we want to use of the libraries. And then here's, here's the function that makes a copy of the template. It takes the ID of the template we want to copy and the name we want to give it. And then we see in lines 56 to 65, uh, how we're using uh, the copy function from the client library to apply, apply the, the request. And then we get the ID of that copy. And here's the function that does the autofilling. It takes the ID of the copy and the data to insert. So the first thing we do is construct update requests that we would like Google to apply to the document. So we see here how, how we replace the, the, the tags with the values. And then when those requests are constructed, we just use the library to apply those requests as one atomic operation. So now I'll talk, talk about the code for the add-on. Uh, for the add-on, we used just two files, the index.html and the code.js. And the uh, index.html just allows us to display uh, our form in the sidebar. And that file also contains a script tag that allows us to create that form and take user input. And this is all done using jQuery. And then the code.js file um, has code that allows us to get the fields from the document and populate it. So when the user clicks um, show fields, the add-on executes this function. And the main things this function does is construct a list of form fields that should be shown to the user. So in line 24, you can see the regular expression we use uh, to find the tags. And then in line 26, you see that we call the find text um, function that we use to look through the document. And this uh, functionality, functionality that's provided by Google. And then in lines 42 to 54, we get the field name and the list of options if they exist. And here's the code that constructs the HTML form using jQuery. We just uh, loop through all the fields found by the previous function. And then in lines 36 to 51, we either create a dropdown or a text field depending on the number of options. And finally, here we have the function that runs when the user clicks fill document. Uh, it gets the values of the form and reconstructs the tags it needs to replace. And this is done in lines 68 to 81. And then in line 88, we use another Google function called replace text. And that basically replaces the tag with the value provided by the user. And that's our presentation and we'll be happy to take any questions.